this is what everybody was talking about all day on Tuesday. Mike Gundy and the Oklahoma State crew get to Las Vegas to Big 12 Media Days and very quickly get asked about what's going to happen with Ollie Gordon. Ollie Gordon is their star running back. He was arrested on a, a DUI charge earlier this month. And Mike Gundy says, not suspending him, brought him here, and he's going to answer questions. And then he's going to play. And there was obviously an uproar over that. And then Mike Gundy kept getting asked about it. And, well, here's what he said in the press conference. This is the, this is the, the formal, your, your 20-minute period where you're up on the big stage. And he got asked about the Ollie Gordon situation. Uh, Ollie's doing fine. I've visited with him multiple times over the last week. Um, be quite honest with you, yesterday we had another hour conversation, and it was really the first time that uh, that he smiled. Um, I think that it uh, it affected him like it would most people. We brought him here today um, so you guys could ask him that question. That was one of the reasons that I wanted to bring him here. Um, it's hard for me to speak for Ollie. I can only give you some indication on what I've seen over the last week. Um, I sit back and thought about what I thought was best for Oklahoma State University, Oklahoma State football, and Ollie as we move forward. And we made decisions. And the other thing I shared with Ollie yesterday was after he decided that he wanted to come to today's event, that I told him, when this is finished today at 4 o'clock, it's over for me. I've already made the decisions that I think is what's best for you and this team. And you need to make the decisions in the comments of what you think is best for yourself and the team. And then after today, it's over with. And that's what our goal is. And, and I think we'll be able to get that accomplished. So that is what Mike Gundy said. Essentially, instead of suspending Ollie Gordon, he brings into Big 12 Media Days and all you Game of Thrones viewers, this is this is the walk through King's Landing with the Septa behind you going, shame, shame, shame. And Ollie Gordon, for his part, handled this really well. He got asked a ton about it. We've got one clip. Uh, our friend Jenny Carlson, uh, you can subscribe to her Substack stack beyond the, beyond the box score. She has been covering sports in, in Oklahoma for a long, long time. In fact, she's the one who wrote the story that Mike Gundy got mad about back in 2007 when he was a 40-year-old man, as he reminded us in that particular press conference. Uh, but you know, Jenny's, obviously, their relationship has been very much mended since then. And Jenny's covered this a long time. And I thought she asked the right questions of Ollie Gordon, and Ollie Gordon gave Pretty good answers. Ollie, I know a lot of talk about what happened a couple Sundays ago. Um, what at this point would you like to say about what happened, just where things stand with you? Um, it's really just I uh, apologize for my actions, you know, um, the mistakes I made. You know, it wasn't good. Every mistake, have, you know, every action has a consequence. And um, you know, I just want to apologize to my family, my team, for my actions. And, you know, I just hope that I can get back on good tracks and good terms with all of them. What goes through your mind as all of that's happening? I mean, obviously, you know, you've got big things coming up. Like, what's going through your mind as, as uh, events are transpiring that night? Is it right now? No, that night. Uh, you know, for legal reasons, I don't really want to speak on that topic from that night, you know. Uh, but I have learned from my actions and won the smart decision. What did it mean that Coach wanted you to be here? Sort of, you know front of us to answer questions about it. Uh, well, yeah, I talked to Coach Gundy, and it was more like it was my decision if I wanted to come or not. And, you know, I felt like it was my, you know, I felt like I should have came because it wouldn't be fair to my teammates or my coaches, you know, yeah, I think, uh, I think up here and answer questions when I could. Going 3-9 last year, so. Uh, I think, adversity uh, that you're going through, how is All right, here we go. Ollie. That's the answers from Ollie Gordon. And, it, but it, it didn't keep his coach from getting asked about this. And where, where things sort of went off the rails was when Mike Gundy went on ESPN after his, 
his big room interview. And this is where he, 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 this is part of a longer answer. I, I'll, I'll say that, but we're not, we can't take four minutes of, of ESPN video. They're not going to, not doing that. But this is the one that got everybody's attention. And we'll talk about that and we'll, we'll put it in the context of the longer answer. But this is the one that everybody's like, whoa, hold on. We were with you maybe until this. So I looked it up on my phone. What would be the legal limit? Like in Oklahoma is 0.08 and Ollie was um, 0.1. So I looked it up and it was based on body weight, not to get into the legal side of it, but I thought really two or three beers or four. I'm not justifying what Ollie did. I'm telling you what decision I made. Well, I thought I've probably done that a thousand times in my life. And, and I, you know, it's just fine. I, so I got lucky. People get lucky. Ollie made a, um, a decision that he wished he could have done better. But when I talked to Ollie, I told him, I said, you're lucky you got out light because you make a lot of money to play football. Okay, so that's Mike Gunny doing beer math on live television. Now, Mike Gunny tweeted later, my intended point today at Big 12 Media Days was we were all guilty of making bad decisions. It was not a reference to something specific. But yeah, because it makes it sound like you were deciding whether to drive drunk or not a thousand times, because that's what you said. But I'm actually going to give Mike Gunny the benefit of the doubt on this one. And I'll tell you why. Because I understand his point. We have, a lot of us, been in that position, especially a lot of us of a certain age. And we'll, we'll get to that part in a second. But there have been times, for me, I imagine for a lot of you, when you are doing the beer math in your head, just like Mike Gundy was doing on live television. I've been at this restaurant for two and a half hours. I had two beers. I had three beers. What do I do now? I get it. Now, the circumstances of the Ollie Gordon arrest were a little bit different. He, he brings up the, the blood alcohol level, but if you read the arrest report, Gordon was found with a, a half full bottle of lemonade vodka, half full bottle of tequila in his car, refused the breathalyzer at the scene and blew the, the 0 0.10 back at the, the station 40 minutes later. So let's add that context to it. But I understand because We've been there. Most of us has been, have been there. Christopher in the chat says, I've absolutely driven when I shouldn't have. And it is, it's a bad decision. And I'm with you, Christopher. And I think a lot of us can say that. Now, here's where, what I will say about living in the year of our Lord 2024. We don't have to decide that anymore. We don't have to make that decision anymore. And if you're in that situation now, and this is, I, I, you know, I've got a, a kid who's going to get a learner's permit soon, trying to explain this stuff. If you're in that situation, we now have a way to never have to worry about that. Alan in the chat, I have two, but I do not drink and drive any longer. That's too much to lose. You're absolutely right, Alan, because we're, we're talking about this a few days after we just talked about Kyrie Jackson passing away from a car crash that, that, it may have involved a drunk driver. We don't know yet. They're investigating it still, but the, the police said they suspect it. It involved a drunk driver. And it's there is so much to lose for yourself, for other people. We all know the Henry Ruggs story. It's, it's really bad. So we don't have to do that anymore. That is one of the great things about living in the age we live in now. And so I'm 45. I know a lot of you in my age bracket and older, you, rem you remember these days well. Like I live in a small town. There's not a ton of taxis in this town. So there would be times when you couldn't get a taxi and you're just sitting there going, what do I do? And I've, I've just sat in my car for a couple hours in situations like that. Just like, okay, I, I, I can't, I'm not doing this. I'm not driving, but I have no other way home. That doesn't exist anymore. We have Uber and Lyft now. We have it. The solution is there for everyone. It is reasonably priced, especially compared to the cost of what the DUI is going to cost you if you get caught. 
It is barely anything compared to that. So there shouldn't be these issues anymore. You know, we saw it with, with Justin Timberlake a few weeks ago. Like, what is Justin Timberlake doing? But I understand where Mike Gundy is coming from when he says that. I think he said it wrong. But I understand where he's coming from. What Mike Gundy also said in multiple interviews that I found very interesting that we have not really talked much about. That was not in the, in the outrage cycle yesterday. You didn't get a lot of nuanced discussion about what else he said. And I thought it was interesting. He mentioned that Ollie Gordon is making a lot of money for playing football, which is true. And Gundy didn't say it in a judgmental way. It's a statement of fact. He is. Just like an NFL player is. Now, he's not making as much, but he's he's making good money. Part of that is you're, you're paying him, or the collective at Oklahoma State is paying him to play. So does that factor into the suspension decision? I would, I would venture to guess the opponent in game one factors into the suspension decision. It's South Dakota State. And some of you are going FCS school up. Oh. You can't beat an FCS school without him? Well, South Dakota State's the two-time defending FCS national champions. Remember the last time a two-time defending FCS national champion went to a power conference school? I do. It was when Appalachian State went to the big house. 2007. We all know how that went. So, I imagine that's part of the decision. And then... Gundy brought up another thing, that four-minute answer that I'm talking about. In that four-minute answer, he brought up something else that I, I've always struggled with myself. And I don't know the, the right answer. I realize I'm supposed to have these massive flaming takes on everything. But I really don't know that I have the right answer on something like this, or if any coach does either. And this is what Mike Gundy says. Is suspending him for one game really going to matter? I don't think so. Now. You want to spend him for six games? Maybe. Maybe that would do it. But I don't think that's fair to everybody else on our team, and I have to take that into consideration. That's a very honest answer from Mike Gundy. A very honest answer that I'm not sure a lot of other coaches would have given. He's right. Gundy's job is to win games. The other players probably need Ollie Gordon to play to be in the best place to win those games. And this is a pro sport now. You know, it, it always kind of was, but now it really is. And so the whole morality play that has always sort of consumed college football, even though it was kind of BS, I think now we can strip that away. The whole, we're molding men here. No, you're trying to win football games. That's what you've always been trying to do. If people grow as human beings through that process, that's great. But that's not what people are trying to do. So I thought that was a very interesting answer for Mike Gundy. I also thought that Mike Gundy, you know, He's always been pretty loose in front of a microphone. We know that. <laughs> this is this is Mr. I'm a man, I'm 40. But he is really in screw it mode now. Like he can say whatever he wants, I think, and, and probably not worry about any sort of adverse consequences from Oklahoma State, from anybody else. He's been through multiple controversies like this. He's been fine. And he's been winning above... Oklahoma State's historical winning percentage for his entire time there. So I think he's fine on that. But I also think Mike Gundy's about to enter an era where he may have an advantage. And it's crazy to think, because I remember about a year ago wondering how long Mike Gundy was going to last in the era of the transfer portal of NIL, because I wasn't sure if he the way he won was going to work in that era. But that era is about to not end, but shift into the era of schools actually paying players. And I think that 
is about to give Mike Gundy a big advantage, especially in the Big 12. Because in the Big 12, everybody's pretty similar. There's no giant big dog. Texas and Oklahoma are gone. So there's no school where they're going to have a collective that can kick in so much more money above what the school is kicking in that they would have a prohibitive advantage financially. So Oklahoma State is not a school where the collective is going to be able to, to give them a ton of money, where if, they're, if, if you are relying only on your donors to pay the players, which with the, what, what you have now, it's tough. But if you've got money coming from the athletic department, coming from your TV contract, that is going to pay the players, and then you supplement that with your NIL, with your, with your collective's money, then I trust Mike Gundy to win a lot that way because Mike Gundy hasn't ever needed to have the most. If you get him close, he's going to be very competitive. And I, I talked to another power conference coach earlier this year, and he put it really well. This is another, another person who's great at evaluating, great at, at developing talent. And, and they basically, this coach was telling me they went to their administration and said, if you can fund me at the bottom, I'll put you in the middle. If you can fund me in the middle, I'll put you close to the top. And that's kind of where Mike Gundy is. If Oklahoma State can fund Mike Gundy in the middle, Oklahoma State can be really good because he's always been at this disadvantage. He's always had to deal with Texas and Oklahoma. He doesn't have them anymore. Now he's got a bunch of schools that, that are kind of similarly situated. Now he's got to deal with some other coaches in this league who are also really good at what he's good at. Kyle Whittingham at Utah. Lance Leipold at Kansas, Chris Kleiman at Kansas State. Like, they're great at that too. Willie Fritz at Houston. We've seen that throughout his career. Now he's got to get it going at Houston. But Gunny got asked a great question at Big 12 Media Days about is it possible for anybody to dominate this new Big 12? And he had an interesting answer. Uh, that's a great question. I, I don't know that any of us. Uh... We'll be able to read into that at this point. We're learning about the new teams that are coming in. In my opinion, as we move forward, there's going to be a lot of parity. I should say more parity in college football than there has been over the last few years. If revenue sharing takes effect, I would guess that most schools in this league will distribute money somewhat equally to football. The direction we're going, that's going to determine the type of players that you have in your organization, whether we like it or not. Recruiting is still recruiting, but it won't be as much recruiting as now. It will be the ability to distribute money to the right players that you need based on the talent that you think that you've seen at that particular time. I think that we've got a number of teams in this league that have an opportunity to make a move national. Whether anybody can take over and dominate for an extended period of time would be hard to tell at this point. That's Mike Gunny basically saying, you give me 15 million bucks a year from the school and payroll and I will beat your ass. I don't know if they're going to get 15 million, but it's going to be 20 million that they can share among the athletes. And I would imagine most schools in the Big 12 are probably going to fund football at the same amount. Football is going to get more than the others because football makes all the money. And so if it's between 10 and 15 million, you're giving Gundy that. I got faith in them to win a lot in that situation. I have a lot of faith in, in Mike Gundy, in Kyle Whittingham, in Lance Leipold, and Chris Kleiman in those situations because that puts them probably in a better position than they've ever been in before relative to the rest of their leagues. That's going to be fascinating to watch. And I don't think we're talking about that nearly enough because I am very curious to see how this all changes because we talk about the money and we talk about how much that matters and it does matter. But you still have to be able to choose the correct players for what you do. And you've got to be able to develop the players once you get them on campus. And Mike Gundy has proven over 20 years that he can do that.
Kyle Whittingham's proven that. Lance Leipold's proven that. Chris Kleiman's proven that. That changes the math on these things. It's going to change the math in the other conferences too. It's a lot to think about because it's a big change. We haven't seen it yet. We're going to start seeing it next year. But get ready because that is the next wave. This little mini era between 2021 and now, it ends after this year. A new era starts next year when the schools can pay. And I think that that gives a guy like Mike Gundy an advantage. It gives Dabo Sweeney a massive advantage. Like, we keep saying, is Dabo going to figure this out? Well, if, if we take Dabo at his word, once the school can pay, they're going to be able to be competitive in the transfer portal. Those are the coaches you got to be really scared of in the new era. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But that lost in Mike Gundy doing beer math on live television was Mike Gundy talking about the future of college football in a way that, that most of us probably hadn't thought about yet. And I do think we need to think about that going forward. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On3Sports YouTube channel.